Hello everyone, this is Jotto, and welcome to the Hearthstone Weekly Show. Now, as I said, it would be on Tuesday, because this video schedule for this week is just ridiculous, but anyway. Uh, for this week, me and my teammate Birdie are going to be going over the entire set of Naxxramas. We got it yesterday, so we're going to go over the whole thing. All 30 cards. So, why don't you introduce yourself, Birdie? Hello, my name is Birdie, and I'm from Sweden. I've been playing Hearthstone for about 8 months right now, 8 or 9 months, and I'm currently playing Druid and a bit of Rogue, but yeah, mostly Druid, and thanks for having me on. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to go over each card, it's going to be in alphabetical and rarity order, so we're going to do all the commons, then all the rares, then all the epics and legendaries. So we're going to go over each one, and for each card we're going to go over its constructed playability, its arena playability, and sort of just our first impressions of the card and things like that. Anyway, so without further ado, let's get started, shall we? Yes, sir. So, on to the first card, the Anabar Ambusher. It's a 4 mana 5-5 five five rogue common with death rattle, return a friendly minion to your hand. Now, the first problem I see with this is that Chillwind, it's basically a Chillwind Yeti with a drawback for one extra attack. It's okay, I guess, but I don't like it that much. It just, it doesn't seem to do much besides just be a bad Yeti. Exactly. I mean, it's a, you can only play it in Tempo Rogue, I guess, and no. No, you not want much Yeti. to say about it. There really yeah. isn't much to say about it. It's a Yeti with a drawback. Exactly. It kills other yetis, sure, but it's just a yeti with a drawback. I don't really like it. Um, constructed, I don't think so. Uh, no, not no. A constructed. Arena, it's even worse. <laughs> yeah, 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 because it, they, it's so situational that you basically have to build your deck around it. Yeah, I, I don't like it. I don't know, maybe we're wrong about the arena thing, because arena's always hard to predict, but I, at first yeah. impression, it just seems like a worse yeti in both formats, at the same rarity. Um... So yeah, anyway, we'll move on to Avenge. Now, Avenge is a one mana Paladin Secret at common. With Secret, when one of your minions dies, give a random friendly minion plus three plus two. Now, at first when this was spoiled, it was a while ago, I thought it wasn't too good, it was a bit too situational. But there's a lot of other cards in this set that really do help this out. Yeah. So I actually think it's okay now. Yeah, I mean, it's really good. Plus three, plus two is a really good buff, and uh, really, no matter what minion gets it, it's really good in the end. Yeah, and there's some seriously, seriously powerful cards that, like, give multiple minions, and you can tutor this up with Mad Scientist, as we'll get to a bit later. So you can actually, you don't have to card disadvantage yourself. It's actually going to be quite handy and won't always be a dead card like it could have been before. It'll become the best Paladin Secret, for sure. Yeah. Uh, I think it'll be better than Noble Sack, because Noble Sack gets popped by Hero Powers. Yeah, exactly. Yep. So, Constructed, I think so. Yeah, I think so as well. Um, Arena, I think it's even better. <laughs> Indeed. I mean, since it's random and the buff is so good for one mana, I think it's, it'll, it'll be really useful in Arena. It's really good in Arena. I think it's the yeah. only secret that you pick highly in Arena. Yeah. I mean, the other ones, they're so situational, like the the Redemption one, you don't want to use that on a token, so to say. And on the Noble Druid. Sack. Noble Sack is really bad against Druids and Rogues. Yeah. So, Avenge, I think, is the best secret by far in Arena, and in Constructed, I think it's definitely got its place. Yeah. Really, really, really sweet card. Now onto a card that does not have its place. Dancing Swords, a 3-mana 4-4 four, four, common. With Death Rattle, your opponent draws a card. Um, last time I checked, 3 mana 4 threes have upsides. Why does a 3 mana 4 4 have a drawback? Mm, I don't know, man. I mean, it's it's like a Jedi. Yeti is a bad Yeti as well. It's. Uh, no, no, it's not a bad Yeti, it's like a bad Acid Rick. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I said. I said at the beginning when we went over Dancing Swords originally that it was okay because you needed Death Rattles for Undertaker, but as the rest of the set comes out, it's going to get worse. And yes, it did get worse. <laughs> I think yeah. it's one of the worst cards in the set, actually. Dancing Swords? Yeah. I think it's in bottom I'm not sure. It, it might actually work with, um, with the Silencer on minions. 
With the, yeah, with the Silencer and Minion Sky that we'll get to a bit later, there is a deck that might run that. The problem is that there's just better 3-drops in that deck. Yeah, that is true. So, I don't know, I, I, I don't like it. I think it. I'll see people play it a lot, but I, I'm not sure if I'm going to play it myself. Yeah, the problem is, it if it dies to Yeti, then the Yeti is still a 4-1, and they draw a card. And yeah, your there's opponent, so many 5-drops uh, that basically owns it. You can also play a. You can also soul fire it, and it's a one for one. Oh yeah, that's really awkward. Yeah, it is. Uh, so I mean, soul fire eviscerate is also one where you just combo and eviscerate, and you draw whatever you use to combo basically. So it's just a one form with eviscerate. Okay, the four health is really bad. If it, if it was like five health, it would be way too good. I think five four maybe. I don't know. Maybe I don't know. I think. To be honest, a 3-mana 4-4, four, four, or maybe a 3-mana three 3-4 three, with no effect yeah, that's neutral, because I know we have de I know we have the 3-mana three 3-4 three, in Priest, but that's a class card. So, yeah. And I think 3-mana three 3-4 three, is more powerful than the 4-3, so 4-3s get upsides, 3-4s are vanilla. Why don't we just have a 3-drop Yeti? <laughs> yeah, it makes sense, but I that don't like the Dancing sort that much. Not anymore, yeah, but I think if it was a 3-mana three 3-4 three, with no effect, it'd be good. Yeah, of course. Or maybe, like, Death Rattle deal your opponent 2 damage or something, like the Lepernome. Just to give it a Death Rattle so it's good in some decks. I don't know, maybe just yeah. something. Something the useful. is way too big of a drawback. Yeah, it is. Um, now, the funny thing is that the next card on the list is actually Dark Cultist. <laughs> now, Dark Cultist is a 3-mana three 3-4 three, with Death Rattle, give a friendly minion, plus 3 health. This is basically absurdly powerful compared to Dancing Swords. <laughs> it's really, really good, but it didn't get that much hype. I'm no, sure people were like, I think the reason it didn't get hype was because, one, people don't seem to realize how good 3-mana three 3-4s three, are. And the other thing people don't seem to realize is that that death rattle is nothing to joke about. Like that no, death rattle really, really is good really priest. powerful, especially in priest. Yeah, and it yeah, especially in priest, it's ridiculous. So it's exactly it's an amazing the card that the priest actually needed. Yeah, it's stable, it's reliable, it does well on its own, and it helps throw other cards. Yeah, it's perfect. Perfectly if designed card. If I'm gonna play priest, I'm gonna play that card, no doubt. Yep, it's not gimmicky in any way, it's just powerful. Exactly. I think it's the I think it's definitely one of the better class cards. Cause the best the better cards in the set tend to be neutral in this set for a weird reason. Um but I think this is definitely one of the better class cards. Yeah, it's really, really good. I like it. Yeah, it's really, really powerful. Uh now let's move on to Arguably the best class card, Death Spite. Now, Death Spite is a four mana four two weapon with Death Rattle. So when the when the weapon gets destroyed, deal one damage to all minions. This is a Warrior's True Silver. It is awesome. I like it so much. That is all you need to say. Now, the whole True Silver versus Death Spite thing, I think it is way closer than some people think. Like, Death Spite, I know Death Spite's Whirlwind effect is arguably better than gain 4 life, but gaining 4 life when you're using a weapon is nothing to joke about. Like, people keep saying True Silver's effect is useless, and it's only good because it's a 4-2. That is not true. No. True Silver's effect is actually extremely good. Uh, Death Spite, I think, is a little bit better because uh, Warrior... Uh, because Warrior uses it more, but I think what puts True Silver up onto the same level as Death Spite is that Paladin absolutely needs True Silver, whereas Death Spite is like an added bonus for Warrior. Yeah, it's like the best weapon in the game, but it's not actually needed for Warrior. I think it's the best weapon in the game, but in terms of how much the class actually needs the weapon, True Silver is arguably the be better. Yeah. For Paladin, at least. For Paladin, True Silver does more than Death Spite does for Warrior. Um, but anyway, yeah. those two weapons, depending on the metagame and how aggressive it is and how many one health minions are going to be involved, uh, I think they're going to go up and down as to which one's better. Like, if there's a yeah, bunch of one health stuff, Death Spite is better. If it's a bunch of like mid rangey decks, Death Spite is worse than True Silver. Well, it's really hard to compare them since it's two different classes, so you can never actually compare them. Well, no, I mean, if you, it's hard to compare them, but I just mean like on a side by side basis. Oh, okay. Um, but I think that actually, I still think True Silver is the best weapon in the game because of how good it is for the class it's in. 
I mean, even heel Sagro, Agro Paladin. Exactly, which is good for racing. Yeah. Like, I do think True Silver is still the best weapon in the game because of how important it is for the class it's in. Death Spy, I think, is the second best one, and it is only beaten out by True Silver because Warrior are like, oh, sweet, a new weapon. Didn't really need it, but thank you. <laughs> sure, I'll take it. Sure, I'll take it, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, and note that I didn't include Gore Howl or Doomhammer in there, partly because Gore Howl was terrible, and Doomhammer, while useful, can sometimes kill you. Well, Gorhal might be better with the with this pa with this batch. Maybe I mean, no, it doesn't. It doesn't kill Kelthazard in its own. No, but it kills a lot of other stuff. It kills a lot of other stuff. Yeah, but everything hits so hard that you might just have the same problem like you do against Druid, where you're just basically giving everything with four attack or more charge. Yeah, um, that that might be the the problem. I don't know. I, th well, I think you, you Gorhal's going to get worse. You give it charge, and uh, I mean. It's only one hit. It could have been two without yeah. the war, without the. It could have been weapon. two, but it also it just means that it's guaranteed damage, and usually it would only attack once if you only have removal anyway. Like the the main problem I have with Gorhal, especially now with Nax, is because the faster decks are becoming more powerful, and the slower mid rangey decks are having are getting harder to remove threats, which means you yeah. have to use weapons on them more. So arguably it's better, but you're gonna if you use Death Spite, you can AOE some stuff. If you use Gorhal, you're going to take so much damage from attacking minions. It's the Gorhal trap. It happens with Doomhammer as well. Oh yeah, the Doomhammer. I like it, but no. I think Deathspite and True Silver are the two best weapons in the game. Doomhammer, I think, is third, and then Gorhal. And then maybe Fire War Axe after that. And, uh, Storm Fire War Axe is awesome. Uh, War Axe is now better than Stormforged Axe because it's a lot okay, of three health stuff. We're not going to have this discussion. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're not going to have this discussion again because this is the only weapon in the set. That's why I'm bringing it up now. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's the only weapon in the set, so that's why I'm bringing it up now. Because uh, a lot of people were discussing this versus True Silver, and I actually still think True Silver's better. But anyway, um, Constructed, Windmill Slam. You want it. Just. You, in Constructed, yeah, no doubt. In Constructed's insane. Arita, insane. Uh, I'm not sure about the arena actually. It's a true silver. True silver is a bomb in arena. Yeah, I mean it's really good. Yeah, I'm not sure. I can't answer that until I tried it. I think maybe the death rattle could be a drawback is the problem. Exactly, because you you never know what you're gonna draw in arena, and it's so it's not that versatile in arena as it is in constructed. I think true silver is definitely better in arena than. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, it's it's okay in arena, especially if you're running a slower deck. Uh, because it's a 4 2 fit 4. That's a good weapon. Yeah, it's really um, good. But yeah, constructed, definitely. Alright, so, moving on to duplicate. 3 mana, common mage secret. Secret. When a friendly minion dies, put 2 copies of it in your hand. So this uh, is basically arcane intellect, but you draw whatever was killed. It looks good, but it's not good on its own. It's good with two cards. Exactly. Um, Kieran Torm I mean, I I think I'm still gonna play it because there's a deck that runs some, like that. I'm designing a deck, uh, like a mage aggro deck that runs some very very powerful secret interactions with duplicate. And there's Kieran Torm Mage that you can run to get it as free, which goes past Loatheb, by the way. Just gonna point that out. Uh, and the other one is Mad Scientist, which we'll get to in a couple cards, which is uh. It basically has Death Rattle put a secret from your deck, a random one, on the board. So when Mad Scientist dies, the duplicate comes onto the board and you basically get two free cards whenever your next minion dies. That is awesome. That is a really cool combo. It's a really powerful interaction. And before think... anyone says it's Wombo Combo, no. Starving Buzzard Unleash is harder to pull off than that. <laughs> yes. Like, it's not a Wombo Combo, it's a legitimate strategy. <laughs> I think that's the best combo, so to say, but uh, I don't think Duplicate is that good on its own. I don't like it on its own. I think you have to play it with some sort of uh, aggro deck that can use it with Kieran Tormages and Mad Scientists. Yeah. Th that's where its place is. I think people, when it originally came out, people were like, oh my god, it's the worst card we've ever seen. It, it's not. It really it isn't. It, it actually looks play. really cool. It looks really cool. I know it looks a bit underwhelming because you don't get to pick, but the point is it's like... In the mage deck, if you get duplicate for free off a mad scientist, three mana turns to zero, and you don't even have to use it from your hand, 
it actually becomes zero mana effectively draw three because you don't lose the card. And with Mad Scientist, it is freaking awesome. Yeah, Mad Scientist is amazing. I mean, basically, it's... Yeah, we'll, we'll get to it in a few cards, as I said, but Duplicate basically becomes three mana draw three almost because you don't lose the Duplicate. So you're instead of plus one, you're doing plus two. So that's even better than Arcane Intellect, if you think about it. You're getting two minions, which is often better than drawing two random cards. And in the Mage deck, if the Duplicate is free, if you have to pay three mana for it, there are some really bad stuff. You can get like Mirror Images or like uh, Mana Worms, things like that. But if the Duplicate is free, there's nothing bad you can get. Like Mirror Image literally just turns into a second Mirror Image, just that costs two mana instead of one. Yeah. And Knife Juggler is amazing to duplicate. Water Elemental, amazing. Loot Hoarder, amazing. Like, Mad Scientist, if it dies, gets duplicate, and Loot Hoarder dies, the Loot Hoarder just, like, the Loot Hoarder duplicate between them drew, like... Wait, but that is, that is what... Six like, cards? Uh, <laughs> that is why I don't like this. I mean, it, it sounds good when you be like, oh, one Loot Hoarder died, I get two more in my hand. But in the end, that's way too slow. Well, no, but one of the main problems with Mage Aggro is that you have board control because of mirror images and things like that. But then once you get to about turn four or so, if you don't have your Arcane Intellect, it's like a Mage Aggro deck with Arcane Intellect is very hard to stop. The main reason it's not a big problem in the metagame is because you need to draw the Arcane Intellect. <laughs> it's like Divine Favor almost, but it's less powerful when you do get them. Yeah, I guess. So, like, Water, El water Elemental is no joke, by the way. That is one of the most that's the one of the most powerful four drops in the game if not the best and uh, there is going to be a time where you're going to have duplicate on the board and the best case scenario is duplicating a water elemental I know they cost four each but now you get to play a water elemental every turn I mean if the match is really slow that is really really good um, I mean against control decks duplicate is like what lets you win whereas mage aggro has issues against control a lot of the time because it just runs out of gas yeah uh, and I think I think it's underrated. I'm not sure how powerful it is, but I'm definitely going to test it, and I'll get back to you guys on that. Because uh, I think it's underrated. It's definitely uh, people seem to hate the card. <laughs> it's it's like a hard it's hard to place it. Yeah, I agree. Now uh, constructed, as I said, maybe I'll get back to you guys. Arena, I'm not so sure. Yes, in arena. Really? Yes. Yeah. Well, because drawing two minions is better than drawing two random cards. Yes. Okay. I mean. Um, card draw is so big in uh, in arena. Okay, so you and get, if two, you get minions. two minions. Yeah, if you get two minions stuff on the on the card draw, it's really really good. All right, then duplicates okay in arena. All right, I like that. Moving on to haunted creeper, a two mana one two common beast with death rattle. Summon two one one spectral spiders, which I assume are also beasts. Now. Yeah. This was originally spoiled as a 2-1. It would be so much better as a 2-1. Because mm, then yeah, it trades, and then you get two 1-1 one, one spiders. Yeah, of course. I mean, uh, the 1-2 is not bad, but 2-1 is so much better. Exactly. Like, the 2-1 the body would have been so much better. The 1-2, I'm not so sure. I think outside of Hunter decks, I don't see it in that many places. In Zoo, it's like a worse Amani Berserker against AoE. Oh, yeah. I, I think it's just a, uh, a Hunter card, because it's a beast. Well, it doesn't really trade with anything, the 1 2 body. No, it doesn't, but you can use Hunter's Mark with it, and also Starving Buzzard benefits off the 2 spiders. Also, the, the plus 1 attack to the beast. Um, yeah. yeah. What is it called? Uh, Timberwolf. Timberwolf, yes. Um, and also, Leoc is good with this as well. Yes. Like, there's there's a couple neat interactions in Hunter, but I don't really see this anywhere else but Hunter. No, no, I would never play it at anything other than Hunter. Yeah, and I think that's pretty much it. Uh, constructed, just with Hunter, I would say. Arena, Arena, also just with Hunter, I would say. I don't actually know, it's not that bad of a two drop. No. It's, in Arena, it's, I like it in Arena, but I never play Hunters, so I will never play it in Constructed, but maybe I'll pick up Hunter when this is released. Maybe, maybe Arena, or it's not that bad in Arena in general, because if you're playing Druid or something, or Mage, you can use it to kill 3-2s, and then you get 2-1-1s. One 
Yeah. I mean, it's, it's not terrible in arena. I like it in arena. It's a solid two drop. It's better yeah. than Murloc Tidehunter, and some people oh, pick that sometimes sure. when you don't have other drops. So yeah, I think it's okay in arena. Now, moving on to the Mad Scientist, a two mana two two with Death Rattle. Put a secret from your deck onto the battlefield. You like yes, this one, don't that you? is insane. I love this card. Oh my god, I love <laughs> this card so much. Uh, it's my second favorite card in the set. And it's not the second most powerful. But it's my second favorite in terms of like flavor and things like that. Uh, and I absolutely love it for two reasons. One is the duplicate interaction where you play it and then when they kill it, you get a free duplicate. And the other one is that when you're, if you play Hunter or Paladin, like in Paladin, you can run Death Rattle Paladin because this is a two drop Death Rattle creature to buff your Undertakers. And it also fetches Avenge. And being able to play Avenge without losing cards is huge. Yeah, I like it so much. It's very um, interesting. In, I think most people are saying, oh, Hunter. Now, the problem with playing in Hunter is that the Hunter secrets are very situational. So you might just get the wrong secret because it says random. So you can play it. The only way I would see it is like if you're running an aggro deck with Death Rattles. Because that is a thing. You have two, you have Death Rattle Beasts and you also have the Web Spinner. So you could run Death Rattle Aggro with uh, with Hunter, and you can play this to get your one of or like two of Freezing Trap just to screw with the mid range decks. No, yeah. that's the only way I see it in Hunter. To be perfectly honest, actually, I actually don't have that much to say about this card because I don't like it much much as you do. Well, I mean, it's because I'm a deck builder, so I go crazy yeah, with I guess. This stuff. Um, I mean, like, as far as you're concerned, you're, I mean, as far as, as far as, like, you and Fire and Dapper are concerned, you're just, like, waiting for one of us to hand you a deck that actually works with us. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, alright, oh, sweet, I'll tinker with it. Because <laughs> that's what usually happens. We, we give yeah. the, uh, we give the rough decks to, like, you three, and then you change a couple cards and make them refined. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Uh, so yeah, I mean, me, Crispy, and Maud are going to be doing the crazy mad scientist stuff. <laughs> You'll work on that, and I'll work on piloting. Basically, yeah. Anyway, constructed, as I said, with duplicates and things. Arena, I'm thinking maybe because sometimes you only have one secret in the deck and you really want it. Especially in Hunter. Hmm. Yeah, in Hunter it, I would pick it's it. It's a common. It's a common, so you might actually... It's a two It's a two mana 2-2 two -two as well. That's not bad in Arena. It's not good, but it's not bad. It's not terrible. I, I would say it's actually pretty bad. Well, two two for two is really bad in arena because everything is either three two or two three, and two three is more common. Uh, yeah, two three is more common, but I mean, like, if the other two picks are terrible, <laughs> it's yeah. not exactly bad. It's so card it's, advantage. That's my main thing. It's, it's nothing advantage. I would pick in first hand if I really had to. Then I guess if I had a secret in my deck, I would consider picking one, just to you know get two copies of that secret effectively. Yeah. It's not game changing, but it's 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 fine. And fun. also, it's card advantage. If they kill it and you have a secret in your deck, it cycles. Mm. Yeah. Um, so that's an interesting way of looking at it. It's card advantage for the decks that play secrets but don't have that much card draw. And getting duplicate in arena off Mad Scientist is even more insane than it is in constructed. <laughs> I would say so. Yes. That that is a really good combo in arena. If you if you pull that off, you basically win the game and actually. They're both common. <laughs> they oh, are both yeah. common. Like you you might get that. You might actually run into a guy with two of each of them. <laughs> okay, let's say you play Mad Scientist on turn two and then it dies on turn three and you played and you get a free duplicate. You just copy your three drop twice. Yeah. I mean that is so insane. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. I I I think duplicate. I mean duplicate. It's with Mad Scientist. A lot of people are saying, "Oh, it's a free Arcane Intellect." It's actually not because Arcane Intellect. When you play Arcane Intellect, you lose the card from your hand. Duplicate just creates two new ones, and you take it from your deck, not from your hand. So it's plus two cards into your hand, not and plus it becomes one. free as well. Yes, exactly. It just becomes the super intellect. <laughs> like that's what that combo changes that card into. So I think Mad Scientist Duplicate is going to be a real threat, if not in constructed in arena. Yeah, because yeah, they're both common. So constructed, maybe, uh, probably, arena, definitely. If you're running a secret, anything else? Uh, no, I don't think so. I mean, I would play it in constructed if I'm playing a deck with secrets, no doubt about it. And in arena, if if I didn't have a secret, I would never pick it. So, 
if I picked a secret before I get this one, I would pick it. Okay. Now, on to my favorite card in the set. <laughs> Just had the second favorite, now I've got the favorite. Uh, Narubar Weblord. I think that's how you pronounce that. Two mana, one, four. Minions with battle cry cost two more. Oh my god, this card is so cool. It is awesome. I love this card so much. Alright, so let's count the ways, shall we? So, when Loatheb was originally spoiled, his effect was this, but it increases it by five. And we thought that was a bit insane. We said, Wait. like, three or two was fine. Did it increase Battlecry with five? Yeah, increased Battlecry oh. by five, and it was a permanent effect. Until left. Whoa! Yeah, it was nuts. Um, so they moved it onto this, and I think that they moved it onto a card, and this card is perfectly designed. Oh. That, yeah, this is much better, because that other stuff was way too OP. Yeah. This is a perfectly designed Hearthstone card. There's nothing yeah. bad with this card at all. 1-4, really good stats on it as well. Yep. It like This is going to be a one-off silver bullet in every single deck that does not use Battle Cries as much. And that is going to... I mean, people are not going to play that much Battle Cry. But it's still going to shut stuff down. Like You play Weblord, and it shuts down any decks running Azure Drakes any decks running uh, aggro creatures, because there's a ton of battle cries in aggro decks. You can also play turn 4 versus Zoo, you know, and he can't play Doomguard. Exactly. A ton of... Uh, they have to soul fire it in Zoo, by the way. Well, unless they actually have a really good, really well, no, big if, board. Um, if you play it on turn 2 or turn 1 with coin, they have to soul fire it. Because oh. they can't play... They can't play, like, half of their stuff. They can't play abuse. That is so much value. Yeah, they can't play Abusives, they can't play Flame Imps if they top deck them. They can't play Shattered Sun Clerics. Like, there's so much stuff they can't play. And they have Three to Soul Fire flame it. Imp? No. That ain't good. Yeah, they have to Soul Fire it. Yeah. Uh, it stops Doom Guard, as you said. And if you have a Taunt up, and you play this behind the Taunt, they're just screwed. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna play it in Druid. I'm pretty yeah, in Druid. My, yeah. Druid has... Uh, Druid, if you take away the Azure Drakes, which is what I've been doing anyway, and in this set, there's some seriously overpowered 5 drops. So Azure Drake is leaving. People who are even... Like, Azure Drake uh, versus Stranglethorn Tiger, I prefer Stranglethorn Tiger, but a lot of people are saying Azure Drake is better than Stranglethorn because it draws. It's not even debatable whether you want to play Azure Drakes anymore. There, there's, like, a debate for removing one Druid of the Claw for some of these 5 drops. Oh, yeah. Like, it's they're crazy. They're absolutely crazy. It's not even I'm close anymore. I'm pretty sure Azure Drakes are leaving the meta. I mean, they might be played in decks that have absolutely zero draw, uh, so they need it, but the just the five drops in this set are way too powerful to contend oh, yeah. with for Azure Drake. It just, it's not going to work. And even if you do play it, this freaking Weblord is just going to stop it from being played if they draw it on turn four. That's just terrible. I really like this card, and I really think it um, fits really well in Druid. Also, you can play this on turn four, and they can't play Lothab. Oh, <laughs> that's a big deal actually, because it means you that get to play your deal. spells on turn five. <laughs> so that's a fairly big deal, and in Druid, it does not affect anything in the deck because it's all choose one. Choose one is not battle cry. <laughs> it's pretty good in uh, Rogue as well because they use combo, combo instead of battle cry. Exactly. So basically, choose one and combo abuse the living hell out of this effect and a lot of other death rattle decks like the paladin death rattle deck I was thinking about and also the tempo decks tempo decks now will not be running as many battle cry cards, they'll be running a lot more of the uh, persistent effect and death rattle cards because there's so many value ones, so tempo rogue, tempo warrior and they love this, like tempo warrior we're playing armor smith right now I think you can play one armor smith, one web lord because they both hit different things yeah and they both have the same stats, and I mean, it's really good. I would actually consider cutting one Armorsmith and put two of these in. Maybe, yeah, you might just cut Armorsmith. Because this is very, very good against aggro. It's amazing against Freeze Mage. They have to Flame Strike it. Do they stack? Uh, yes. Okay. So, um, also with Duplicate, it's just miserable. <laughs> uh, it's just miserable. Like, you play Mad Scientist against Zoo, they trade, duplicate, you play Weblord, if they kill the Weblord, you get two more, you replay them, and they're just never playing anything again. Uh, <laughs> oh my god. Like, it's... It's like a really uh, good uh, backwards venture co 
so to say. Yeah, it is a bit. I mean, it work. It affects your side as well, but there are certain decks that will just not play battle cries. If you if you play your deck around that card, you skip the battle cry. That is basically a reverse the, ventricle. Yeah, the only battle cry I will ever see being played in a deck with this is Lobotheb, but that's just because that card is absurd. Yeah. And that's a one of legendary, so it's fine running like one of Weblord, one of Lobotheb. That's absolutely fine. Like you can do that. Running if you run like two or more battle cries, I would not run this. It affects your side way too much. Uh, but you want to be using it to disrupt your opponent. Yeah. Now, constructed definitely amazing. No doubt about it. In arena, yes. In arena, there's a lot of battle cries. <laughs> yes. A indeed. lot of battle cries. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, every minion has battle cry in arena. Um, how high do you pick this? In arena. Yeah. Um. Like I would I would probably pick it if I got it. No doubt. Um, do you pick it like you pick it over any other two drop, right? Almost. Uh, I'm not sure. I think so. Yeah. Um, it's a it's a really good one. I mean, it's a really good minion. I would pick it no matter what. I would say that. Okay. I mean, we'll have to see how it turns out. But yeah, I think yeah. I can agree with that. Moving on to poison seeds, four mana. Druid common, destroy all minions and summon 2-2 two -two trains to replace them. No, it says destroy, not transform. So all the people who thought it polymorphs everything, no it doesn't. This is the card I've been waiting for. Oh my this god, is this is so card. good. Now, basically, every single druid deck will play one. Why do they play one? Because druid cannot kill half the stuff in the set. Oh my god, dude. They need poison seed, because as soon as they're behind on board, you are going to die in a couple turns, because you just get locked out by disruption. So you need to poison seed. Like, you have to poison seed and then you're back in the game, and if you have Starfall, it's a board wipe. I freaking love it, man. It's so All good. All the problems you had with Handlock, gone. Oh yeah, with Handlock, it's hilarious. That you just you just rush them down to ten. Like on turn <laughs> six, you rush them down to ten, they go molten, molten taunt, they go put and you just go poison seed and they can seed. <laughs> oh my god, I can't wait for this card. Like against concealed auctioneer as well. For all those people who say Miracle is not dead, you are in denial. There are so many good anti-Miracle cards in the set. Basically a whole set is anti-Miracle. About, I would say about 10 cards in the set are good against Miracle. Which is insane. Some of them really shuts them down. And yeah, some of them just destroy it. Uh, like, um, something we didn't mention about Weblord, shuts down Leroy, Arcane Golem, any of your stupid charge shenanigans with drawbacks, no. <laughs> just, just no. Uh, so you're not allowed to do any of that. But Poison Seed kills Concealed Auctioneers, and basically now the Druid deck has two cards that destroy Concealed Auctioneer play. What is the second one? Lotheb. Oh yeah, that's right. You either, like, you on turn five, the, the chance, there's a, like, 50% chance that they're gonna have some, it's, no, it's higher than 50. It's like 60, that they're going to have uh, yeah. a card that stops your Concealed Auctioneer play completely. So, yeah, I won't see it. You won't see that much Miracle Rogue. And it, even if you do see it, Druid is going to destroy it. Druid is going to be so strong. I Druid is going to be Druid. incredibly powerful. And that's good for us, because, I mean, a lot of us are Druid specialists at the moment. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, Druid is going to be amazing. Now, Poison Seed is also the one all it's the one off catch all that you need to beat certain decks like Crusher Shaman with Kelthazard and Rebirth. The only way of beating that is with Poison Seed. Uh, so there's a lot of things you're gonna need Poison Seed for. I know if you're really far behind you're gonna lose, yes, but what do you expect out of a four mana card? Poison Seed is basically what you need as Druid when this when next Ramus is released, because you can't handle those legendaries that are that is that yeah, you, you that can't is handle coming. It. No, you can't. Um, so you need to... Uh, also, if your opponent has Fugan and Stalag on the board, you can Poison Seed and they don't get Thaddeus. They don't? No, because they die at the same time. It's the same mechanics as Cult Master. Oh. Uh, because oh, they're not trading into each other, they're just dying at the same time. Okay. Uh, it's an interesting way of looking at it, but yeah, it's weird. Uh, we've seen things like that before. It's just, it's a weird mechanic, but whatever. Uh, so... Poison Seed lets you deal with things you can't deal with, like Kel'Thuzad. <laughs> Kel'Thuzad Rebirth awesome. is unstoppable for a Druid, apart from Poison Seed. It's not Rebirth anymore. 
Uh, it's reincarnate. Anyway, I'm going to yeah. call it rebirth because it sounds better and it's what I'm used to. Uh, and most people know what I'm talking about. It's yeah. reincarnate, the two mana shaman secret that we're. Uh, two mana shaman, shaman card which we're actually coming up to next. Uh, so, Poison Seed, constructed, one off in almost every deck. Yes, no doubt. Uh, it's the catch all that you really need. Arena. Hmm. Um, I'm going to give that a maybe, actually. Maybe one. You don't you don't pick two. Two is terrible. No, I don't know. You maybe don't pick one. Two. I think maybe if, one. if one comes up and the other two cards aren't that good, pick it. It's not that bad to have as a one off. You can kill their giant or their major bomb that they just played that you can't kill. Actually I think I would pick this in arena. I think it's a yes to me. I changed my mind. Alright, as as one of. Yeah. You pick one. I think getting one poison seed is nice. Two or three, that's terrible. But one <laughs> one is really good. Maybe need like four or five, dude. Yeah. <laughs> poison seed the poison seeds. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, on to the next card. Reincarnate. Two mana common shaman card. Also a two drop in shaman. It's blasphemy. Anyway, mm. uh, destroy a minion, then return it to full. Now, I'm going to have to be careful with how much I ramble on about this card. Yes. Um, because there's a little bit too much to talk about. You now, love this card. Yes, this card does way too much. All right, so basically, you destroy and return it. Now, this is the stuff I've already said before. You target Twilight Drake. You basically silence it because the battle cry doesn't go off. You can target Unbound Elemental to unbuff it or unsilence anything. Target uh, something to untaunt it from Defender of Argus. Uh, injured also, Blade Master and Crusher Shaman. Yeah, you can also use it on. Uh, I like I like using it on Alakir. Yeah, you get uh, two two sets of attacks with it. Yeah, so with Wind Fury on Wind Fury. With two Divine Shields. Exactly, it's really good. And uh, Miracle Shaman might be a thing because you can actually now instead of having to use Wind Fury with Leroy, you actually have a useful card. Yeah, you can use it um, on so it's, many. It's like Shadow stuff. Step. It's like Shadow Step. You can use it with Leroy for two mana, deal six, or you can use it with other cards in your deck. You don't it's need to use it for Leroy. Oh shit, Miracle Shaman is a thing. Yeah, because before they had to use Rockbiter or Wind Fury. Rockbiter you'd rather use for removal, and yeah. Wind Fury is a useless card. <laughs> so basically. Reincarnate is basically the Shaman equivalent to Shadow Step. So we're gonna bash on Miracle Shaman instead of Miracle Rogue. Yes. Um, anyway, they don't have Gadget Down Draw, fortunately, but uh, the Reincarnate is going to sometimes kill you with Leroy 1 Reincarnate. I think that's going to happen. Now, I think with Alakir it's actually better because it means you can actually use it to either deal 12 to the face or clear 4 minions. You usually get to that stage in the game in, anyway. I mean, a 10 mana, you're a 10 mana for like the whole game as Shaman. Yeah, you. I mean, I think the strongest one is Alakir Reincarnate because you can use that to either deal twelve to the face or clear his entire board. Yeah, it's so one for four, two for four, two for four. But you probably keep the Alakir because you're using the Divine Shield to hit the really big stuff. Yeah. Uh, so I think it's really, really, really good, and it was. I mean, even before we saw Kel'Thuzad, I haven't talked about this since Kel'Thuzad, but. Before Kel'Thuzad was shown, I thought it was a really good card that might see one of, maybe two of, play in Shaman. You know, as like a utility catch-all card that's just good. No, then Kel'Thuzad came along. Now, Kel'Thuzad breaks this card in no other, like, that's the only way you can describe it, because Kel'Thuzad works on both players' turns. So what you do is on turn 10, you go Kel'Thuzad reincarnate and your opponent concedes. <laughs> Because you bring back Kel'Thuzad, and then the new Kel'Thuzad brings back the one you destroyed. So that's a two-mana oh faceless God. manipulator. That is awesome. Like, the only class that can deal with that is Druid with Poison Seed. Or Double Shadow Word Death. Yeah. I it's guess, really good uh, also Mind Control, the, also. Mind Control. It's really good with the Fugin and the... Stalag, yeah. Stalag interaction. They might not run that, though, because it's a bit too slow, but Crusher Shaman is insane with this because you kill an Earth Elemental with Ancestral on it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now is, you wait, have to deal get, with two. Do you get three or four copies? Uh, you, well, the new one comes up, then the old one is brought back, but if you have two Kel'Thuzads, then uh, you get three yeah. Earth Elementals. Like, Kel'Thuzad with Shaman in general is just absurd. 
Indeed. It's, it's just really insane. good. It's retarded. Like, th I'm just going to say, it's absolutely retarded. Now, with other decks, I think Warrior Control, because they're going to bring the curve down a bit with Fugan and Stalag over, like, Ragnaros and Grom, I actually do believe that's going to happen, and Ysera. They is um, going to be played. Kel'Thuzad is a better win condition than Ysera. Yeah. Now, Ragnaros and Gromash, I think, are going to be too variable and too slow to be played uh, anymore. They're not powerful enough to how much mana you have to put into I, them. I actually think Gromash will still be played. Maybe. So good. The problem is Big Game Hunter is going to be played on things like... Because if Stalag and Fugan become popular, then Big Game Hunter is going to be played to so still dies to BGH. Which oh, is yeah. annoying. Let's um, still. We'll see. We'll see. I think that Ragnaros is definitely getting dropped. Definitely. Why? Because Kel'Thuzad costs the same amount of mana and just does more. And it can't get mm. BGH'd. Like, how do you remove a Kel'Thuzad if you're not Priest? Uh, poison Seeds? Or Druid. <laughs> I'm not sure, dude. It's really good. <laughs> um, it's like, I think Ragnaros is going to die off entirely because it's just a worse 8 mana bomb than Kel'Thuzad. That's the way I see it, at least. Not to mention that more people will have Kel'Thuzad because it's from a wing. It's not from a, like, crafting thing. Oh, yeah. So, so Rag is just going to die off, in my opinion, because a lot of people will be very happy to disenchant their Rag so they can get other legendaries that are more useful. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, Rag is going to die off, I think. Kel'Thuzad's going to kill it. And the other stuff, like Fugan and Stalag, I think I'm going to see playing Warrior Control as well. Because you can uh, you can get through the whole deck, but reincarnate basically reincarnate. What we're getting to is reincarnate is absurd, and with Kel'Thuzad it just breaks the game. Um, yeah, exactly. Constructed definitely arena. I'm not sure. I don't think so. Mm. Maybe one. Maybe. Yeah, maybe because one I'm is not okay. Sure. I think. I mean, you can actually you can use it on uh, your opponent's board as well. Yeah, one is okay. Stuff. Yeah, if you yeah. buff stuff, or if you get your flame tongue silenced or something. Yeah. I think one is okay. No. Oh, God. All right, so, Spectral Knight, five mana, four, six. Common. Common. <laughs> Can't be targeted <laughs> by spells or hero powers. What were you thinking, Blizzard? Like, why is this common? I don't why? know. Why? It should be legendary. It, what? All right, because legend. running two of those is really good. Legendary, yeah, maybe. But it's like, at least make it rare or epic. We don't want to break arena. Oh, you're thinking like that. Oh yeah. my god, why is this common? I like, actually didn't think about that. It's the third best card in the set. Um, it is an insane five drop that basically all... Uh, remember earlier when I said all the people who love Azure Drake are going to be like crying by the end of the set? Yeah, Spectral Knight destroys Azure Drake. Like, don't even come near me. Like, Azure Drake does not even work anymore. Spectral Knight is just way more powerful. Yeah, it's so good. Now... Can't be Fireball either. You can't kill it. <laughs> you cannot kill it. Now, the funniest things with this is uh, it destroys Miracle. Miracle cannot kill this card. Um, they need board presence, and good luck getting board presence against the deck running Spectral Knights. So... The funny thing is that it seems that Miracle Rogue players at the moment are in denial because they've been running Miracle for four months. So oh God. most of the Miracle specialists are like, no, no, it's fine. We can kill it with Deadly Poison Blade Flurry. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you can't. <laughs> Doesn't work in the end. You can, but it's a two for one. And what happens if they have a second one? It's like, no, they don't have a second one. It's like, yeah, yeah, Miracle Rogue won't be around. Much Miracle longer. Rogue is going to die off so hard. Um, Someone will, will find a way to make it better. That's what maybe. I got. It's going to change a lot, though. Yeah. A lot. They need to change up. Now, Spectral Knight is also the most disgusting card to innervate out. Oh, my God. The award now goes to Spectral Knight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Druid. You're fucking beautiful. It's a three... Like... Alright, so on turn, like, this is crazy, by the way. Turn 2, Wild Growth. Into, like, Yeti Knight. Oh my god. That is so good. Or, no, no, Yeti Loatheb Knight. So the Yeti trades with two guys, because you couldn't kill it with spells. And then the Loatheb probably kills something, and now you can't kill the Spectral Knight with spells either. <laughs> well, you can never kill Spectral Knight with spells. 
Yeah, I know, you can't kill anything with spells with lower third and Spectral Knight in the game. Uh, <laughs> spells useless. Uh, but Spectral Knight is actually a 5 drop, where in Druid, Azure Drake is definitely getting replaced by a Spectral Knight and lower third. Or, or your yeah. Tigers, depending on which version you're running. Now, I actually think it is a valid argument to remove one Druid of the Claw for a Spectral Knight, especially in the taunt-heavy decks, because they have extra taunts to make up for it. There's no discussion about it. You should remove one Claw for one Spectral Knight. Okay. I mean, this is so good. It's a 4-6 Druid of the Claw in taunt. is also a 4-6, but this has so much more value. The effect is absurd. I actually think that if you're running two Senjins, you do not need the double claw. You can afford to run double knight. Yeah. Uh, maybe, maybe the lack the of charge. The claw is really good in charge. Uh, yeah. yeah, you may have to run like double argent commander to compensate. No, you can actually run one argent commander and one claw. Um, Druid of the claw, not claw. Yeah, Druid of the claw, not the one mana too. Anyway, uh, yeah, Druid of the claw. Yeah, I can see that. I mean, we're gonna have to be tinkering around with the numbers a bit, but I think knight is just absurdly powerful. Yeah. So, I'll play it in Constructed. No definitely. Doubt. It's the third best card in the set. It is the best non-legendary card in the set. Um, it should be a legendary. Uh, I'm not sure if running two of these will be... I mean, it, it'll it should be so either, powerful. It should either be a legendary to balance it, or an epic so it doesn't destroy uh, Arena. Like, you know mm. that there's going to be a guy who played Druid with three Innervates and five Spectral Knights. <laughs> it should at least be a... An epic. Yeah, so in that you don't get opinion. as much in arena. Yeah. Like, that's the main thing, because normally arena balance is not a problem. Like, for, for me at least, because I don't play arena as much, but in this case, like, the first time I saw this, I was like, alright, so that's pretty overpowered. And it's a common... Wait, it's common. <laughs> you guys didn't think this through very well, did you? Uh, yeah. It'll change, I hope. God, anyway, constructed. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Arena, one of the best cards in the entire format. <laughs> Yeah, no doubt you, you'll run. I mean, it's a yes for both Constructed and Arena. It's crazy. Um, yeah, that's nuts. Absolutely crazy. Uh, moving on to Stone Skin Gargoyle. Sorry, Gargoyle. Uh, yep. Three mana, one four. At the start of your turn, that's important. It's a common, by the way. At the start of your turn, restore this minion to full health. Mm. Meh. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't trade with anything. Why doesn't it say at the start of every turn? It's a 1-4. I mean, 1 damage can't do much. Why doesn't it say at the start of every turn? I don't know. That's my main problem with this card, is that if you use it to trade on your turn, then it dies. If your opponent doesn't attack it on their turn, its effect is useless. So, 3 mana for this is way too high. I could understand if it was 2 mana. Yeah, but I think this is a gimmick card for buffs. Oh yeah, of course. So, I mean, it's a gimmick card for buffs. To be honest, I'm fine with a gimmick card. Uh, it's a gimmicky card, so I'm actually fine with it being bad. Uh, I don't. What I'm not fine with is bad cards that are not even fun. That is what you I'm could, not fine with. You could use Power like, Shield Inner Fire on it. Yeah, you could, or just Inner Fire for a 3 mana 4-4. Four, four. I mean, no, but that's just a worse Dancing Swords. Yeah, 3 mana 6-6. Six, six. Yeah, 3 mana 6-6. Six, six. No, 4. 4 mana 6. No, 5. 5. Yeah, 5 mana 6-6. Six, six. Whoa, we're digging deep here. Anyway, um, Arena is also terrible. Yeah. Like, horrible. I mean, it, it basically dies to everything in Arena. In Constructed, have fun with your gimmick decks. In Arena, don't even try. Just don't. We're gonna be so wrong. It's gonna be so good. It's I gonna be to so God. good. People are gonna go, like, Blessing of Kings on Gargoyle, and if you don't have a silence, you lose. Yeah, it's yeah. gonna be so good be just because we're saying it's gonna be bad. Just because we said it's going to be terrible, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be the best card. Yeah. It's, <sighs> please don't be the best card. I don't want to play in a card <laughs> format. Anyway, moving on to the fourth best card in the set, in my opinion, Undertaker. Undertaker is a 1-mana one 1-2. One, Whenever you summon a minion with Death Rattle, it gets plus 1, plus 1. This is the fourth best card in the set. It's just after Spectral Knight on the power level curve. And is absolutely crazy. Yeah, it's really good, unless you, like, draw it too late, way too late. The only reason this I rated this lower than Spectral Knight is, one, it can actually be killed, and yeah. two, it's terrible late game. Absolutely terrible. I mean, even, even Argent Squire is better than this one. Late game, game, yeah. Early game, this destroys Argent Squire. 
You basically have to mulligan. Like you have to mulligan really hard for this. Um, yeah, you mul you always keep it, and you mulligan really, really hard for this card. Now let's look at the death rattles you can use. There's a new spider. You can use uh, harvest golem, loot hoarder, mad scientist, lepronome, a web spinner. So oh, zombie show. No, zombie chow. no, not zombie chow. Uh, <laughs> yes, we'll you get can. To, we'll get to zombie chow later. I know you technically can, but whatever. Um, and besides that, I think that's all the major ones you're only running, but that's enough death rattles. Yeah. Like, I think you're going to get this to be at least a 2-3 every single game. At least. And it's probably going to be a 3-4. Yeah, it's really good. I like it. I really, really like it. I think it's the best one drop in the game. Apart from Mana Worm, I think. No, I think it's better than Mana Worm. Because it gets mm. really big really fast. Yeah, it's so much better than Mana Worm. I think it's a lot better than Mana Worm. It's better than Flame Imp, definitely. No drawback, and the health gets boosted as well. Well, like, it, it has the drawback of being drawn too late. Yeah, I mean, a 1 mana. It's better early game than Flame Imp, worse late game, because a 1 mana 2 3 with no drawback is much, much better than a 1 mana 3 2 with drawback. I know you've yeah. got to play a Death Rattle minion, but that's going to happen realistically if you're playing a deck like Zoo. Mm -hmm. um, so I think the card is amazing. Definitely the best early drop in the set. Oh yeah, of course. Definitely. It's really, really good. Out of game. Now, onto Unstable Ghoul. Two mana, no, one for three. You forgot to rate oh, the arena. God damn it. Moving back. The, yeah, this shows I haven't done a set review in a while, doesn't it? Anyway. Um, so, Constructed, definitely. Arena... Is this a one drop uh, you actually pick? I don't know because, I mean, it depends on what your deck is. If you if you get this to uh, as the first pick, I wouldn't choose it. I think to be honest, you you actually pick this in two different areas, uh, either at the end of your draft if you have a lot of death rattle, or at the beginning of your draft so that you can draft death oh, rattle. Oh yeah, of course. It's a bit like Murlocs, only less annoying to draft. Yeah. Um, anyway, so yeah, now Arena, maybe Constructed Definite. Now I can move on. Uh, <laughs> Unstable Ghoul, Common, 2 mana 1, 3, Taunt, Death Rattle, Whirlwind. That's basically what the Death Rattle is. Deal 1 damage to all minions. Yeah. This is very, very good against aggro. But the it's main. It's very, very yeah. good, I mean. Against Paladin aggro, especially. Oh, yeah. The main thing I see this in, though, is an anti aggro card in Warrior Tempo. Yeah. Because Warrior Tempo loves Whirlwind effects. It triggers your Armor Smiths, it triggers your Cool Taskmasters, it triggers your Amani Berserkers, it triggers all of your draw. It just. <laughs> yeah, crazy. together with the, with the death, death Bite. They already run Whirlwind. You have four Whirlwinds. Um, actually, I think if you remove your Drakes from the deck because you have Spectrum Knights and things like that, you may run this over Whirlwind because you don't have any sp you don't have as much spell power anymore. No, you actually want a Whirlwind because you want to do it on command, so to say. I'm still waiting. Yeah, I think you might run like one of this and then two Whirlwinds. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, constructed, maybe Warrior Tempo. Arena? No. No, not an Arena. Please don't. No. Uh, onto Void Caller. 4 mana, 3, 4, common demon. Death rattle. Put a random demon from your hand onto the battlefield. Now, when we tested this in Cockatrice, it was doing some seriously unfair things. Uh, with uh, <laughs> Doom Guards. <laughs> but uh, I think it's actually not as good as it was because there's so much other powerful stuff you can be doing. But I still yeah. think it might see some play. Yeah, it's still a 3, 4... I mean, a 4 mana 3 4 is really good on its own as well. With Sense Demons, it's really good. Yeah. Um, sense Demons might actually become a thing. I think one one Sense Demons, just to tutor up some demons, uh, is really, really nice. And it also, Void Terror is amazing with this. Oh, yeah. If they don't kill it, you Void Terror, you eat it, you maybe eat an Arubian Egg as well, and that's just a trip to Value Town. That's a 6 9, right? Uh, no, it's a Bowl of Fist Ogre. Uh, actually, no, with the Nerubian Egg as well, that's a 6 9, a 4 4, and a Demon. Yeah, that is awesome. It's crazy. Uh, and it's not a big Hunter target either. Exactly. It might see some play. I think there's definitely going to be some sort of Demon deck that runs it. I don't know how much play it will see, but I think it will definitely be theorycrafted with. 
Yeah, no doubt. Mm -hmm. um, so constructed, definitely someone's going to play it. Arena, I'm not so sure. I don't think so. No, I don't think so either. It's too... Uh, maybe, actually. You don't play demons in Arena, though. Well, you could. You could play Doomguard, I guess. Uh, you could just use Doomguard and uh, the one deal, one damage to all characters. Yeah, Dread Infernal, that's true. Um, yeah. Maybe. I think if you have, if you already have two demons, I think this is okay. Yes. If you have less, if you have like one demon, I don't think it's good. Well, you have to have one in your hand, right? Uh, yeah, Otherwise you need... Otherwise it doesn't trigger. You need at least two demons in your deck to pick this. Yeah, but you have to have one in your hand. If you doesn't have one yeah. in your, if you don't have one in your hand when it dies, it doesn't trigger, right? Exactly. I mean, when you're drafting it. Yeah, exactly. You, but yeah. I mean, in game right now. I, yeah, in game it needs to be in your hand. Otherwise, it just doesn't trigger. No, I mean, if you have void color on board. Yeah. And you don't have any demons in your it hand, doesn't it doesn't trigger. Yeah, exactly. Nothing happens, and it doesn't get a worthless imp or anything. Just nothing happens. So it's a maybe for me. Yeah, I think it depends on how many demons you have in your draft. I think it's probably a maybe on the verge of being no, depending on how many demons you get. Yeah. Now, onto Web Spinner, one of the least situational cards in the entire set. One mana, one one, common beast, death rattle, add a random beast to your hand. That is from the entire collection of collectible beasts, by the way. From Angry Chicken to King Crush. <laughs> um, and what? everything in between. Could you could you get like the hex and uh, polymorph? No, those are tokens. It has to be collectible. Okay. Now, yes, you can get makes now, and that might be the only time that card sees play. But um, yeah, web spinner is a very, very, very good card because it is a one drop beast that cycles. It's like a it's like a flare that drops on the board. It's a flare minion that doesn't clear secrets, which actually flare is going to be so much better. Post oh, Nax, yeah. oh my god, with the Mad Scientist shenanigans. I mean, I'm already a big proponent of running Double Flare in like every single Hunter deck, because I think it, it's what makes the Hunter decks complete. It's even good in the current meta. Yeah, I like my Double Flares, okay? Just don't get on me for it. Like, It makes every Hunter deck complete, and I think a Double Flare is exactly what you need to complete any Hunter deck. Yeah. Uh, now, Web Spinner is basically a Flare without the utility, but instead you get a minion. And it also always draws a minion, although the minion might be terrible. But it might also be good. I'm not sure if this is gimmicky or not. Um, it's so gimmicky that it's not gimmicky. I can't see it played in mid range hunter. Um, no, I think you do play it in mid range hunter just because it draws, and you actually might need the beast later on in the game. Because having draw issues is one of the major things with uh, mid range. Like to be honest, I see this being played in a lot of hunter decks just because it cascades off uh, starving buzzard if you do like a value buzzard. Oh yeah, and it also can be used to hunter's mark if they don't kill it, and it's yeah, better course. than Timberwolf. It's better than Timberwolf, guys. Like I don't like Timberwolf anyway. I run Stone Tusk Boars instead, but it's better than Timberwolf. So if you're running Timberwolf and you don't like the boar, run Web Spinner, please. <laughs> like, I guess. Like and I think really it'll see in, play. Uh, it's really good in aggro. I think. Um, yeah, in constructed, definitely. In arena, definitely, because it always turns into something else. <laughs> Yes. It's one of the only one drops you actually pick in Arena. Even if it's silence, it's still... I mean, it's a silent... But they silence silence bait. a one mana one one. Exactly, it's a silence bait. Yeah, it's really good. Alright, so... Moving on to... Depending on who you ask, either the worst card in the set or not. Anyway, oh, no, actually no, it's not the worst card. It's like, bottom five. Anyway. I, I'm actually starting to like it. Alright, one mana... With Zombie Chow. One mana, two, three, common. Death Rattle, restore five health to your opponent. Now... Something before we start, why is this 5? Why isn't it 3? Why not just make a reverse flame imp? I actually think 5 is is understandable. It's really, really good. Well, no, Alright, so I was having a discussion with some of the other people and I, I think that this this does definitely not go in aggro decks trying to race your opponent. Because no, if what they do is they're going to ignore it for 3 turns and then they'll kill it and then your 1 drop did 1 damage. Now... It needs to attack four times to be better than Lepronome. However, the... So, aggro decks, please don't play this. Oh my god, please don't play this. Unless it's, like, buffed to restore three health. The deck I do see this being played in is a lot of mid-range and control decks run Argent Squires to shore up their early game. Zombie Chow yeah. is better than Argent Squire for trading. Yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah, I was going to get there. Sorry, we didn't have a communication thing before. Yeah. But anyway, Zombie Chow, better than Argent Squire in the trading thing. Except for in, uh, like, Shaman. I would, I would never play this in Shaman. Yeah. Um, and also, pa 
No, I think Paladin. In Paladin mid range decks, I think Zombie Chow is better. Yeah. Yeah, you don't benefit off Divine Shields. You want to be giving things Divine Shields. Um, I think Shaman, I think it might. St I, I think in Shaman, it might be better. Depend it depends on how many. F uh, like in Crusher Shaman, this is better because you don't play Flame Tongues. Yeah. Um. Oh yeah, you do. For your early game, you need something to shore it up. You don't. If you don't, if you play Flame Tongues, Argent Squire, I think is better. Actually, is it? Yeah, I think so. Actually, I'm not, I'm not sure. sure. I think if you play Flame Tongues, if you play two Defender, two Flame Tongue, I think Argent Squire is better. But if you play only three, I think Zombie Chow is better. Yeah. You need buffs to make Argent Squire better than this, but I think Zombie Chow is one of the better trading one drops. Please don't play this in aggro. Just don't. <laughs> Because if you top deck it late game, you play it, and your opponent's like, "Oh sweet, I get to Wrath and heal for five. Yeah, never played it in an aggro. I agree. Please don't. Um, but in uh, in the trading decks that want to keep board control, like tempo decks, in tempo decks it's amazing because you don't race your opponent tempo. You just want to keep the board. Yeah. So in tempo decks it's really really nice. In mid rangey decks and just like, by the way, the difference between tempo and mid range is the mid range runs a lot more removal than tempo. And they have ways of coming back onto the board, whereas Tempo just loses board position. It's much, much harder to push a Tempo deck off the board, whereas the mid range, they sort of get off and on the board continuously. Exactly. They can um, come back from basically anything. Yeah, whereas Tempo decks are a lot more about holding the board, and they're really hard to get off the board, but when you get them off the board, you usually win. Yeah. So, Zombie Chow is a very, very good Tempo card, because it can blow out your opponent's one drops. 